Welcome back to PBS Books here at the LA Times Festival of Books. It's still beautiful. I bet you wish you were here. I'm loving being here. We're sitting here with one of the best debut authors that I've ever read, especially in the romance genre, Jasmine Guillory. Jasmine, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting because I read and loved The Wedding Date, then had it at my book club that we talked about The Wedding Date. Everybody loved it. It was fantastic. Everybody's talking about it, I feel like. Where did you even get the idea for a book like this? You know, I had been writing for a while and then mm -hmm. I sort of had been writing and stopped and writing and stopped um, and then I had the idea for this book and I didn't I sort of like jotted it down but didn't really do anything with it mm -hmm. um, I think it started when a friend of mine from college actually was in town for a wedding and mm -hmm. the wedding was at the hotel that I set the wedding the beginning of the wedding date in Ooh. and that, and that's sort of where I kind of started the idea for it and then I eventually started writing the book and it just was so fun to write that I yeah. kept going. Well, these are fun characters. They're really, really interesting characters. Alexa and Drew are not totally alike each yeah. other, <laughs> but they keep colliding. And when they do collide, there is this beauty and this magic. And it's exactly, I think, how people want to think of love as both, you know, inspirational and aspirational. Like, this sounds like something, to be perfectly honest, that could happen. But it also sounds like it has that very extra element of magic that makes it feel, you know, warm all over. How do you even get that into a book? Oh my God, thank you so much. I mean, I think one thing that I really wanted for this book was to have characters who felt real, mm -hmm. um, who felt like they could be my friend, that I, you know, somebody I went to college with and this was their relationship in their 30s that ended up in marriage, right. you know? And so those were the people that I tried to write, the, like, true love in real life mm -hmm. moments that I know about in my life. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I really wanted, to have people that I felt like I cared about and that my friends could care about that mm -hmm. felt, like, real, but just a little bit of extra. Yeah, and so that was what I was really hoping for. Does Drew remind you of anybody you know? And I only asked that because as I was reading the book, I kept thinking, are there dudes like this? <laughs> <laughs> like, are there dudes you like this? You know, that? I feel like Drew was sort of a composite of, like, many, partly some of my f male friends mm -hmm. um, whose qualities that I really love, but also the people that I wish that I had dated. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh. And you know, as someone who has a pretty phenomenal partner, like I love my partner, I'm very, very happy. You know, I read a book like this and a character like Alexa, and I, all I can think is I want her to win. Like I want her to accept this, I want her to have Drew. How are other people reacting to the book when they talk to you about it? You know, one of the most wonderful things to me about the reaction to the book is, uh, you know, the, the people who read the book before it came out, mm -hmm. um, my, my friends and my family, um, I, like there were black women who read those who know me, right? Yes. But then in pub the publishing world is, does not have as, quite as many black women in it. Right. And so when I started publishing, there, I didn't get as much feedback throughout that whole process. Mm -hmm. So uh, up until it started to come out, like the only other black women who had read the book were people who I already knew. So right. I, I mean, they told me that they loved the book, but I was also like, you're my mom, you have to say that. You know? <laughs> like, you're my sister, like things right. like that. And so it has been just been so wonderful to have black women say to me, I'm so happy that someone like me had her happy ending. Yes. You know, I'm, yes. I'm so ha like this makes me feel hope for my life. Yes. Um, and that's what has been just so wonderful for me to hear from readers. Right. Uh, out, you know, as they read, read the book. Have there, has there been any pushback on like the interracial element of the relationship or do like, because one of the things, as like, I'm also, I'm in an interracial relationship, my fiance is white, and I read a book like this and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not, like, this is what it's like. It's not, you know, I, I, I find that people tend to think it's a lot, it's a lot more complicated than yeah. it actually is. And I love that here, like, this feels real. Right. I mean, I think, I think people actually want, like, the only feedback I've gotten is like, oh, I expected there to be more conflict about 
the race thing. And I feel like right. in real life, in relationships, both in romantic relationships and just like friendships with my right friends, mm -hmm. the conversations that we have about race are like the conversations that they have, where it's yeah. like, oh, I didn't know that that's what happened in your life, you know? Right. And so they're just little things that come up. One time I was at, um, I went to, I was in Napa with one of my closest girlfriends from college. Mm -hmm. We went out to dinner and she, she's white. She looked around and she was like, does it ever bother you to go out to dinner and be the only black person here? <laughs> and, and I was like, yes, but yeah. you're the only white person who has ever noticed that, you know? Right. Like I notice it everywhere I go. Yes. And so those are the, but, the, but that was like a, Five minute conversation, then we went on with dinner. Like, those are the conversations that you have. And they aren't big, like, let's sit down and talk about race. You know, yeah. like, that's, that's <laughs> right. like, let's have a national conversation about right. race in our living room. Like, it, it's small conversations like that that Alexa and Drew have throughout the book yes. that, ha that's, that it's what really happens. And yes. so that's what I wanted them to have, like, a relationship from two different sides, but that felt like the, the conversations that I've had throughout my life with my right friends and people that I've dated and, you know, things right. like that. Right. Um, one of the things that I love about this book, to be perfectly honest, is the fact that you do get the happy ending and all of that, but it is not the happy ending that requires the usual romance thing, which is happily ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's like it's a beginning. Yeah. And it's two people acknowledging, you know, sort of that like, we're at this place and now like let's figure it out was that a conscious choice or was that just where their story went for you well i think i mean you know i'm in a part of my life i am in my 40s mm -hmm. where I, like i feel like the happy ending isn't the marriage it's mm -hmm. like everything that happens after that you still have the rest of your life to live together yes. right and so it's not like life doesn't end when you d say i love you to someone like that's <laughs> right. that's just the beginning of your story of your happy story and so right. i wanted it to be a happy ending that says and then we're going to go on and we're going to keep sometimes fighting and yes. having a difficult time but also loving each other the whole time and yes. these are all the things that we can build for the rest of our lives yes. um and so that's sort of what i want a happy ending to be is not just an ending, but a beginning to a life. Yes, absolutely. Now, the other day, yesterday actually, when I was interviewing this um, this little known um, author, Gabrielle Union. Yeah, oh yeah, never heard of her. She happened to pick this book up and talk about the fact that she was excited about it and that she wanted to read it. How does it make you feel that there are so many people out in the world right now reading your words and not just connecting to it, but being deeply invested and excited about it? You know, it... I can't even say what it means. I mean, I I was always a big reader growing up. I was a little girl who read all the time. Mm -hmm. And books and stories have meant so much to me throughout my life. And I just... It, I just can't believe that other people are reading a story that I wrote right. um, and that it matters to them. I mean, it just makes me so happy that um, something that I believed in so much and cared about and like poured my soul into is something that resonates with other people. It really, yeah. it, it's just amazing to me. You deserve it. I mean, it's a fantastic book. Thank you book. so much. And you have another book coming out this year, In right? In September, yes. Talk to me about The Proposal. Um, the Proposal is about Carlos, who is the best friend in the wedding date. He's mm -hmm. Drew's best friend. Um, it starts here in L.A. at Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. Carlos is sitting behind uh, a woman who gets proposed to over the Jumbotron by her boyfriend. She says no. And that's where their story starts. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> That sounds amazing. So I'm, I'm excited for that story to be out in the world, too. I'm excited for that story to be out in the world. I can't wait to read it. Because you know I love romance yes. novels. Like, this is not just, you know, I didn't just read this because yeah. I was interviewing you. I read this way before yes. I, I was going to be interviewing you. Because I love romance, and I, I, I love your writing voice. Like, I love what you bring to the table, not just in the genre, but just to be perfectly honest, in literature in general. Oh, thank you so much. Can I ask, when it comes to writing romance specifically, because this is a thing that I hear a lot of authors, and especially women authors, worry about, is that they will be pigeonholed into the genre and not be able to write in all the ways that they want to write. Do you ever want to write anything other than romance? Or right now, is that just like, that's my thing and that's what I want to do? You know, right now I'm really excited about the books that I have planned for the mm -hmm. future. But, I mean, 
look, five years ago, I didn't think I'd be writing romance. So right. I never, you know, <laughs> never say never. I, right. Before I started writing romance, I was writing young adult. I could see myself doing that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I, not for a while, though. I have, you know, three more books planned after this, and then we'll see. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, I love books of so many different kinds that... Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with romance right now. I love so much of the genre. Um, there's so many great books out there to read that I'm mm -hmm. just excited about what's happening. But I, I don't certainly don't want to close anything off for my life because there's so many things that I said in my 20s I would never do that yeah. I'm doing now. So <laughs> I, I'm not, not going to say no to anything anymore. Right. <laughs> what's some of the romance that you're reading like just in the past year or so that you've really enjoyed? Um, you know, Alyssa Cole's book, An Extraordinary Union. Oh, yes. We also did that at the book club. Yeah, just let I mean, I just, you know, I've told other people this story, but last summer I was working, when I was working on the proposal, mm -hmm. um, it was like, my my deadline was coming up, I was working really hard on the book, and it was during all this stuff in Charlottesville, right? right. And I was starting to feel like, what am I doing? Why am I sitting here writing a romance novel where all of this is going on in our country? Like, I should be out, I mean, lawyer, I should be out there like, beating down the barricades. And then I read that book and it just made me feel like, yes, I'm doing the right thing. Like it yeah. made, it, it felt revolutionary right now to, to be reading and writing books about black women having their happy ending. Yes. Um, and I feel like there are so many different ways to beat down the barricades. And if this is the, the way I can do it, then that's the way I can do it. But I, but I just love that book so much because it just felt like Look at look at all these black women throughout history who have done great things, and that's just one example. I just I love her writing, and I just adored that book. I adored that book too. I thought it was incredibly well done. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, the premise of it sort of made me nervous yeah. at first. Oh, like, yeah. I was like, I don't know. And then read it and just oh, yeah. loved it. Like, absolutely. And I think a lot of people are going to feel the same way about the wedding date, you know, and eventually the proposal. So one of the things that, you know, just perked my ear up a little bit is that you just said other books coming down the line. So well, what are you allowed to talk about? Oh, well, I have... Um, two more books coming after the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, the third book, which is, I'm, it's, I'm still in my first draft of that, but That's all right. um, it is about other people that you met in the wedding date. Mm -hmm. um, so that will hopefully come out sometime in 2019, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited about the other books to come. Excellent, excellent. I can't wait for the books to come. Thank to you so much. Honest. And I can't wait for your books. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, another thing about the wedding date that I really, 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 really loved was the modern use of technology. Sometimes you don't get that yeah. in books because I think they worry about dating themselves. Yes. But this is so contemporary and this is so of the moment that it made me wonder, like, why did you decide to sort of, like, incorporate technology into the book like that? You know, it just didn't, like, it just didn't feel right to me to have a book set in, you know, I mean, set in the... 2018, 19, whatever, right. generally, to not have people texting each other. Like, right. that doesn't make sense. People who people who live right now text each other. Right. Especially people in a long-distance relationship. It was actually yeah. really funny when I, I was having drinks with a friend who was in a long-distance relationship at the time, and I was telling mm -hmm. him about my book. I had just gotten the book deal. And he said, is there a point in the book where they have a miscommunication over text and then it turns into a big fight? I was like, as a matter of fact, there is. Yes, there is. And, and he was like, because that has happened in my life. And oh, so, yeah. you know, like, it just, I like, it wouldn't have made sense otherwise to have that happen. And I have right. talked to people who try to avoid that, ha doing that in books because they feel like, well, texting is sort of an easy way out because people mm -hmm. can, you know, get in touch with one another. But there's so, it's, it's not like people don't find ways to fight or right. to have miscommunications with right. new times of technology. It's right. just like, there's, it's like, she used a period did that mean something? Is she mad at me? Like, yeah, there's that's, no smiley face. There's no smiley face. Mm. <laughs> there's no LOL you, at the Usually end. <laughs> there's an exclamation, exclamation point. Does that, does that mean something? Right. Like, I feel like people always find ways to agonize about texting. And <laughs> so do. I just thought that that like, 
of course, that we would bring that in. And so that was something that I've done. And, and actually, in the proposal, um, there's group texting, because obviously, you're going to group text with your girlfriends about yes. this new guy that you met. Um, yes. So I think that that just makes sense to me in a contemporary novel to have people communicating in all the ways that we communicate these days. Yes, yes. And you do it so well. Oh, well, thank you. Um, it's integrated really well into the prose and into um, the book in general. It, it just, you know, it, it brings true to be perfectly honest. Everything about it rings true, which is crazy to have in romance, in like the romance genre, um, except I'm seeing more and more and more of it, especially yeah. in contemporary romance. I wonder, you know, there've been a lot of conversations right now in the romance community about um, diversity of protagonists. And here you are with these books with black women protagonists who are, you know, as you say, like getting their happy endings, you know, like, um, I can't help but wonder, to be perfectly honest, like what's next for romance? Do you think like what's the next thing to tackle in representation? Because we are seeing more and more women of yeah, color being absolutely. protagonists in yeah. romance. But there's more. There's more right. and more and more and more and more. Where do we go next? Well, you know, I think, I mean, as we've seen in young adult, right, like so there's been so many great young adult books by and about women of color. Yes. And I think, um, I mean, I think the publishing industry is really recognizing that those readers are out there and care about it. Mm -hmm. And those readers are romance readers too. And so I think there's so many black women, uh, other women of color who are writing romance. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you, I mean, we've seen through the success of so many of those books recently that people are hungry for those stories. Yes. Um, and so I think that it's only gonna, there's only gonna be more and better books to come and I'm really excited to see the, the ones that happen next. Me too. I'm so excited yeah. for romance right now. Things are happening. Yeah, it absolutely. is moving forward, and it's wonderful. Um, one of the things that I also love about The Wedding Date is that as soon as I finished it, I had people to talk about it yeah. with because so many people who are part of like the online communities that I'm part of either had gotten to read <laughs> it early or um, had read it as soon as it came out. And so there was this big conversation about the book online. And, you know, people are always people ask me sometimes, like, how do you cultivate um, an online community and my thing is always like you don't cultivate it like yeah. you just talk to people right. and you know sometimes people respond to you and sometimes people don't like you don't know but for you I think it has been you know this really fantastic opportunity to have the conversation about your book not be confined to literary circles yeah. and not be confined to circles of people who generally read romance. It has moved beyond genre. Was that purposeful or was that something just a happy surprise? You know, it was, it's just turned out to be a happy surprise, which I think is yeah. great. I mean, I think a lot, I, I said to someone like pretty early in the process that I really hope this is sort of a gateway drug into romance for people. Mm -hmm. um, because I've talked to so many people who are like, I don't usually read romance, but I really like your book. Are there other books out there uh, like yeah. it? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. And I have a bunch of recommendations for them. And so right. I hope that people who, I mean, you know, I think people tend to look down on romance because often out of just general sexism, right? Because yes. it's like by and for women. Um, and I think people are realizing like, oh, sometimes I just need happy stories in my yes. life. Yes. And, and also I think there's so much that's within the romance genre, right? Mm -hmm. Like some of the, uh, there's a lot that, uh, uh, there's adventure and there's, yes. you know, a lot of con real contemporary things that people are dealing, dealing with. Absolutely. There's lots of historical stuff and, you know, whatever you can think of. And I think the genre has a lot more to it than a lot of people might I think mm -hmm. so that's something that's really exciting to me because I got into you know when I got into romance I sort of dove head first into a pile of books and I'm right. hoping that other people have that experience too yes and I hope that your book is at the top when they <laughs> dive into that pile to be perfectly honest thank you so much Jasmine for being here I really appreciated this conversation thank you so much for having me this was wonderful yes we'll see each other again. yeah and thank you all for tuning in to PBS books and having this conversation with us we'll be right back